Welcome to episode 50 of Let's Play Civilization 3 Play the World. Now under most circumstances, an episode number like 50 would require some sort of special celebration, but we have a war to run here, so no time for that. And as you'll soon see, there is something in this video which will make it special in its own right, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. Alright, where we last left off, we just conquered New Bombay from the Celts, or, as I should probably say, back from the Celts, because it had been ours a long time ago. So, now is the process of getting enough troops in that city to control it. Because capturing the city is one thing, but holding it is another. The more the bigger the city is, the harder it is to control, as one might um, say to s state the obvious, I guess. So, these cities aren't that hard to control, but I still want a number of troops in there, partially to stage attacks on other cities. Because we've really been pushing ahead here, and I see no reason to slow down or stop. So, move that guy down there. I want to have this guy get me some iron. I mean, coal. So have him build me a little road there. No harm done. Sending in more tanks. I want to clear up that pollution. Because as I, I think I stated in a previous video, when there's pollution on a square, it can't be used for anything. So when you see pollution, clean it up as quick as you can. Alright, sending in more tanks here. More and more tanks. It's very, it's very nice how productive my empire has now become. I want to have one city build another bomber, just because I don't think we have enough. And so far the Celts haven't been defending against our bombers, but they might um, be able to get themselves a fighter plane, which can shoot down bombers. So I just want to be ready for that. Alright, also these workers that I had doing various tasks. I'm going to have them do various other tasks. I'm going to have him work from that city. It's pretty cool when you take workers and... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, come on. Germany? Germany? What the hell? What's wrong with you guys? Ah, oh, well. We don't need the stinking Germans. We can fight this war ourselves. They just won't be able to share in any of the war booty. Okay, well, the it's getting... Whoa, Olsen there just got taken over by the Celts. That's not good. Well, the Koreans are rushing in tanks and marines to fight them, but... Well, the Celts have won that victory. So, Chinese are moving their tanks through. Almost as if there's no right of passage treaty, which there might not be. In fact, I'm not sure why there's an about face with that um, battleship right there. But, oh well. I'm not too worried about it. And here comes something big. Look at the cities very closely. Whoa, you see that? See how they all suddenly changed? That can only mean one thing. We have entered a new age. Ladies and gentlemen, we have entered the fourth and final era of this game. The modern ages. And that means new tech tree, which I will show you in just a second. Just as soon as this darn thing loads it. Pretty much get this screen here. A lot that I probably didn't explain on this screen, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Needless to say, we're gaining a lot of money. And we have quite a big civilization, and as you can see on the right, 
a lot of cities are producing tanks. And these are just the first few alphabetically. Well, here is our tech tree. As you can tell, it's a lot less linear than the industrial ages were. If anything, it kind of looks like the ancient era, which is not very linear either. You see, there's several ways we can go here, several things to discover, all things which are important in the modern ages in the real world, as well as in this game. So, there's a reason I want to do fission first. I can't... You see the little icons under it. The third one is the United Nations. Now, the United Nations is one way to win this game. So, I want to do a direct beeline to fission first and build the United Nations before anyone does. I'm pretty sure most of the other civilizations are going to go to rocketry first. There's still advanced flight, which we haven't got to, but we can probably buy that later. I'm not too concerned about it. Alright. Increase scientific funding. And I want to talk to some of my allies because the Mongols and the Koreans have also reached this modern age. And I want to see if there's any texts I can trade. As you can see, their costumes are different. They change every age, too. Well, no new text I can get from them, but I do want to trade world maps just to get a little bit of an update. So now, I believe I go and I talk to the Koreans, who are also now in this glorious modern age. And the Koreans, I believe, are a scientific civilization, which means they get one technology for free. I want to see if I can sell them coal for rocketry, but they won't have it. Now, rocketry is an extremely expensive tech, but I want to get ahead here, so I decide to um, buy it off them by giving them coal, which is going to help them quite a lot, as well as dyes and a big sum of money, but you know what? It's worth it. If I can get United Nations before them, it's worth it. I'll explain how United Nations works once it's built, but for now, suffice to say, it's very important. Very, very important. Alright, now back to the war at hand. That guy's probably not going to attack, and even if he does, he's probably not going to retake any cities. So I'm going to pretty much ignore him, slowly wear him down over time, and then probably send a tank after him. But I'm bombing this city, and if you guessed that this was our next target, you have guessed right. This city of Toulouse is our next target. It's a city that actually has a number of citizens in it. So move my tank in here and start to attack. And you can tell right away, this isn't going to be an easy fight. The more citizens are in your city, the more well defended it is. So whereas the infantry have a nominal defense rating of 10, with fortification bonus and with being in a city bonus, they're probably more like somewhere between 12 and 15. So, it's a little bit tougher. And also, I forgot something there. I To get my tank there, I had to pass by that army that was stationed, and one of the units in the army, the cavalry, incidentally, has a ranged attack animation, which means it can injure somebody who is just walking by. What that tells me is I really have to watch out, because... Um, He's not completely, he's not as harmless as I previously stated he was. But anyway, I keep moving them on, and I'm already down to a drafted unit. So, make clear good work of him. Only one guy left. Send one of our good veteran tanks, and we attack. He's dead. And yes, sir, the city is ours. How about that? Three videos, three cities in a row. I wonder if we could keep this up. I really hope we can. 
That would be awesome. Now the city is under our control. Just need to fortify a good number of troops. So general rule of thumb, you want at least as many troops as there are citizens. So I want at least six in there. So I want to move them all in there. Take this cavalry and take those workers as my own. Uh, very good. Well, that about wraps it up for episode 50. I hope to see you next time on episode 51. See you later, folks.